I've been into the whole um, antinatalism thing for quite a while. Um, sort of from, I guess, a hostile point of view. I've, I've never really considered myself hostile to antinatalism, but a lot of people think that I am hostile to it, and while there's not much I can do about what other people think. Uh, but what I do find uh, that is extremely useful about justification of one's own existence, and I suppose that is a, also a question that goes to the heart of whether or not we should reproduce, uh, is a fascinating question. It's a question that I actually love asking. Um, it's that old quote, uh, the possibility of suicide makes existentialists of us all. Um, and it, the possibility of deliberate auto-extinction forces us to justify everything. <laughs> um, and I love that. I love being challenged in every possible way. And I think that the entire antinatalism thing, at least the way that it's framed in the little subculture uh, that's appeared on the matter here on YouTube, um, essentially uh, takes a point of view, um, at least as far as I can see, um, that says that there is no justification for existence or whatever, or if there is any justification, it's outweighed by the counter-justifications. Um, now that, to me, is, if nothing else, an extremely useful um, sort of litmus test to uh, apply to everything, to apply to existence itself. Um, I don't think that I've ever really seriously considered the possibility of antinatalism simply because I think that it's just not going to happen because people are too caught up in the idea of breeding. Um, but as a psychological sort of exercise or a psychological paradigm to explore, uh, I think that it's fantastic. It's extremely useful in so many ways to clarify things. Um, you mentioned David Benatar, and I think that his book is very useful in a lot of ways. Um, and one of the most useful is the way that things like guilt can be intellectualized, where it's it seems like it's common sense. It seems like the, uh, the point of view that you're being asked to subscribe to is common sense, Benatar's uh, point of view. Um, whereas it's actually... Um, it's actually a very, very clever and scientific sounding and perhaps most fascinating of all, sincere um, infliction of guilt. His book is absolutely riddled with existential guilt and basically the he's pointing the finger at the human race and saying, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You should be ashamed of yourselves simply for being what you are. I'll... Uh, go through a quote, a quick one, of uh, from his book, and um, quite apart from the case that he's making, look at the amount of guilt that he heaps onto uh, his argument. Um, we infrequently contemplate the harms that await the newborn child, pain, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. For any given child, we cannot predict what form these harms will take or how severe they will be, but we can be sure that at least some of them will occur. None of this befalls the non-existent. Only existers suffer harm. Now, think about this. We infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child. Okay, let's take that statement at face value. Let's assume that it's true. The backhand to that is that we shouldn't infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child. Guilt. Um, that we should always have it on our minds, or at least more than we do, um, the sort of butterfly effect of anything that we ever do. This actually is kind of... Uh, 
Guilting goes far beyond having babies, by the way. We infrequently contemplate the harms that await uh, or the harms that are potentially caused by any action ever. <laughs> um, and, okay, we can either say that Okay, that statement is true, that we infrequently contemplate it, and we can go either way. We can say, uh, yes, we infrequently contemplate that, but we should contemplate it more frequently than we do. We could think that, and that's sort of the implication in what he's saying. He's saying that it's bad that we infrequently contemplate the harms that await a newborn child. Or at least that's assumed. How about we just read it this way? We infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child. Because that's the way we are put together. It is not in our mental makeup to think along those lines. <laughs> now, <laughs> that may be the case as well. Because I agree, we do infrequently contemplate the harms that await any newborn child, but maybe we are like that because that's not the way that our minds work. He could counter that with, well, then your mind should work that way. Guilt. <laughs> um, only existers suffer harms. In other words, if you bring anyone into existence, you're essentially responsible or you're complicit in the harms that befall them. Uh, guilt. It's a fascinating um, case study. Um, David Benatar's uh, Better Never to Have Been. In the extent to which guilty conscience has suffused the modern mind. And he's pushed it to the point where, uh, something that I say that in Mendham has done, where people will look at this, people will look at the lengths to which, which he will force the issue of guilt, and they will reject guilt. <laughs> and it will not have the effect that the good Mr. Benatar expected it to have, if you ask me. People will simply say, okay, either I stop being myself, um, I stop existing, I deliberately railroad my own DNA and my own whatever instincts or drives or desires or anything that I have to procreate, I deliberately railroad those. Or I dispense with the guilt that comes from me doing those things. I think that most people are going to dispense with the guilt. And that's why I say that in Mendham has in many ways abolished guilt as a viable concept. And I think that David Benatar has done the same thing. Um, both of them are essentially saying you should be ashamed for being what you are. Um, or at least that's what I get from what they have to say. That's what I get from this little passage. Um, just doing what every other sentient being does is, for me now, a source of guilt. A source of terrible guilt. Um, I don't buy that anymore. Uh, and this is one of the great gifts, if you ask me, of the morbid antinatalist argument that is now current on YouTube. Um, I'd never really gotten into the whole subject of guilt to the extent that I did when I started to have guilt employed in that manner. And, I don't know, it's another bizarre irony, but... Um, having to justify everything, in my case, has resulted in a positive. Uh, it's resulted in, I don't know, I guess an increased <laughs> appreciation of life and quality of life. Looking at guilt for what it is. It's a terribly aggressive, damaging emotion that even people who mean well abuse uh, horribly. I would suggest that you keep contact, at least from the periphery, with this entire argument, because it's a very useful one, if looked at in a certain way. All the best.